I went to court with him, and uh, you know they went, they went through the prosecution, went through their little thing there, and then we had, we took off like an hour for lunch. Well, we, me and him just went across the street there uh, at a bar and sat there and got about half drunk, <laughs> and come back in. He said, "You wait till my attorney gets him." He literally believed that there's going to be three thousand hell's angels come riding over the hill and rescue him. They was going to bust him out of the trial there on their motorcycles and ride off into the sunset with him. <laughs> so Ralph Buss uh, calls Johnny to testify at his own trial. He felt that this would be one of those cases where testifying was a good move. It was not. He was so high. Well, during the cross-examination, he was trying to portray himself as a peaceful, uh, nonviolent person, and yet uh, he had an album and a song called uh, Armed and Crazy. This fact, combined with Johnny's unusual behavior and appearance in the courtroom, had a not-so-surprising effect on the jury. Things got progressively worse. Johnny is on the witness stand, and for some reason, he picks up this l large gun that's laying there, and he raises it above his head. And he does this whirling thing with the gun. When that happened, Ralph just went pale. It was all over, the end. My heart sank, and um, I visualized him already wearing the handcuffs, uh, schlepping down the hall. About um, two and a half hours later, Johnny Paycheck's found guilty, and he is sentenced to seven to nine and a half years in Ohio State Prison. So the judge said, okay, that'll be uh, seven years or whatever it was, and that is leading John off, and he said, I'll be out in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and he went directly from the courtroom to jail. When he was in the Chillicothe prison down there, he somehow or another got Merle Haggard to uh, promise to come up and do a concert. They've asked me to come out here and introduce this uh, gentleman I've known for about 25 years. I've been doing time with him on the streets. He said going to prison was the best thing that ever happened to him. He said, that saved my life. And it literally did. And it gave him, I think, the inspiration to do the best song that he had ever written, as far as I'm concerned, was the old violin. I can't recall one time in my life I felt as long as I do tonight. Yeah, it's really kind of kind of hard when you sit there and write your own funeral song. Tonight I feel like an old violin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Soon to be put away. Never played again. It makes me cry also, just like they are, because. You can't help but love the guy. He was such a genius. I, can't I talked to him a few times on the telephone before he passed. And I said, man, I got some great songs. I'd like to come to Nashville and, and do them. But I guess it's cause the truth is the hardest thing I ever faced. You know, Johnny Paycheck was a pretty rough scoundrel, an outlaw. He had good points and his bad points. But in the end, his good points outweighed the bad. Just like that hit me. Well, that old violin and I were just alike. We'd give her all the music, and soon we'll give our life. The last thing he said to me was, uh, hey, Gary, I owe you one. I said, you don't owe me nothing. 